Hi guys, Howard here with uh, Brown Sugar, of course, from the Stones, from the Mighty Sticky Fingers album. And um, this is sort of another installment in the sort of a uh, series of Stones lessons that I've been doing, okay? And uh, just like I mentioned in those videos, uh, Keith's style is super loose. Uh, I'm going to hit the King, Queen, and Prince parts if I can here and even show you a couple of other things as well. Uh, but keep in mind that there's a lot of uh, subtle variations and ad-libs and stuff throughout the whole thing. So I'm just going to show it to you uh, for the most part what you'll hear on the record, but there's a lot of stuff going on underneath. Uh, the tab is just a guide, okay, but it'll be a really helpful guide. And the first thing is that we are in an open G tuning. So the uh, sixth string is tuned down a whole step to D. The A string is tuned down a whole step to G. And then the D, the G, and the B string are in standard tuning. And then even though we're not even going to use the sixth string and not the uh, first E string either, the first E is tuned down to D as well. Now, once we're in the open G tuning, we are in classic Stones land, okay? And there's a lot of uh, bar chords going on here, uh, predominantly throughout the whole thing. So we are barring at the 12th fret, and the strings we're focusing on again are the four middle strings. We, we're not going to use the sixth string at all, and not the E string either, okay? So we've got the bar chord happening at the 12th fret. And then in classic Keith style, we've got the 13th fret on the B string played with the second finger, and the 14th fret on the D string played with the ring finger. We hit the chord, mute, release it to the bar, and mute again. Got to keep those mutes nice and tight. And then we take that down to the 5th fret. So that's the main riff that we all know and love, and you hear it right out the gate, right? And uh, he does little variations on that. In fact, he does little variations on it throughout the whole song. Uh, but this is basically how he plays the intro. So that second one is and you can do it with downstrokes or however you want to alternate stroke it as long as it sounds nice and smooth and round. Or, you know, whatever you want to do is totally fine. There is a little subtle variation in that on the uh, third time that he plays it. He basically plays that one two times in a row. And there is a little subtle variation in that. I'm not going to get into that too much because it is so subtle that most people don't even hear it. So uh, to sit kind of nice with the recording, play the first one nice and tight like we did. <laughs> then play the second and third ones and then the fourth one is played exactly like the first one now a quick note on the intro uh, as iconic as those chords are we're also used to hearing that second guitar part you know, it kind of goes right on top of this. And then we hear that. So here's kind of a cool way that you can put the two parts together. Instead of playing it like this, fifth fret, next string open, third fret, fifth fret, we can play it fifth fret, next string open, third fret, and then open G string which kind of buys us a little split second of time to get back to the uh, chord way up here. So, you know, if you're the only guitar player in the band, right, and you want to fill that slot in, uh, that's kind of a cool way to do it. And it actually sounds great. Uh, with the drums and the bass uh, kind of thumping along, okay? Now again, I'm getting into a few little nuances here, but um, I'm not going to overdo that and just get really crazy about it because it's just too much, right? He's going to play it differently live and he's 
he probably played it differently on whatever many takes they took, right? So anyway, uh, but one thing you'll notice on the recording is when you come off of that fourth one, he slides into the next uh, position. <laughs> I like that. I think that sounds pretty cool, and I think that's definitely one of those little variations that is uh, worth a mention. Okay, so we come off of the fourth one and just take the whole thing and slide it up to the eighth fret. Now, once we get to the eighth fret, these are these little subtleties that uh, Keith has in there. I think a lot of people think it's just the same sort of uh, classic Stones chord thing going on, but it's it's actually not. Uh, coming off of that, when you slide into the first one, it's... So he's only grabbing the G string, and uh, hopefully you can see that pretty clearly on the tab. Then you take the chord down to the 5th fret, and he's fretting the B string at the 6th uh, fret. It's played like that, right? Take it all the way down to the first fret. So he's fretting the third fret on the G string on this one now. Putting it on and releasing it. And what he actually does here is he slides back to the third fret. And if you listen real carefully to the recording, you'll catch that it sounds really nice. And the first time, he stays with the G string. Let me do that nice and slow. That's what he plays the first time around. And then he plays. Bringing it back to the fifth fret and again using the B string on the sixth fret. So that whole thing is. and do it again and you'll kind of hear there's a lot of guitars going down acoustic guitar and another electric but it's cool to add some of that stuff in when you come back to start it over again and you notice on that time around instead of staying with the G string he pops down to the B string again and frets the fourth fret so let me put that all together for you nice and slowly. Pretty cool. So what we have so far is... So now we're into the verse, into the verses of the song, of course, and uh, this is where you're going to hear the most variations, the most ad-libs, the most subtle things thrown in there. And like I said, we've got a few guitars firing away now, one of them being an acoustic guitar. So uh, I'll just show you how I've approached it over the years playing in bands, especially uh, being the only guitar player in a band. Uh, basically, Keith is playing this. One, two, three, four, one. <laughs> Um, and you can see that on the tab. But along with that, you'll also hear a kind of boogie thing happening as well. So that's kind of cool to throw in there, and you can kind of cop both feels at the same time. So 
again, just a few ideas on how to approach it on one guitar, okay? And so now we are into the uh, chorus, of course. The chorus, of course, which is played like so. <laughs> into the uh, previous uh, pattern. So uh, this is really fun to play and it's not too hard at all. Uh, what I try to do is focus on hitting the uh, A string, the D string, and the G string, not really bringing the B in there so it sounds a little just sort of heavy. And then we do the slide. Let me do that nice and slow. You can see the tab, of course, but and uh, you can also hear some double stopping going on in there later on uh, so that's kind of fun to add as well just bringing the B string exact same frets but just bringing the B string into it necessarily have to come back and fret that note at the fifth fret. You can just use the open B and G strings. Which is the way I've uh, tabbed it out for you, okay? There's so many variations in this tune that uh, particularly Keith plays. So I just wanted to mention a couple of them. Uh, you'll notice that when the sax solo comes along, he changes the basic pattern again instead of... He's now bringing in the G string. It's the same shape that he used out the gate, right? For the... But instead of fretting across the B string and the D string, he's now fretting the B string and the G string. And it does give it a different sound. And uh, I always thought that was a really cool idea. It kind of beefs up what's going on underneath the sax solo. <laughs> In other words, wash it up, right? Just do what you want to do with it. And uh, you can float those patterns back and forth across the B and the G string. And it's just a really fun tune to do. But of course, he never plays it the same way twice. So uh, kind of just think in those terms, if you will, okay? Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the lesson. And as always, we'll see you guys soon.